Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet commended His Majesty the King's continued support for national efforts to combat COVID-19 and safeguard the health of all, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The cabinet further commended the royal directors of His Majesty the King to launch a financial and economic stimulus package to protect livelihoods and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy. The cabinet reviewed latest updates on the COVID-19 Delta variant and highlighted the importance of adhering to all precautionary measures, getting vaccinated and receiving a booster dose in line with the National Medical Task Force's recommendations. The cabinet welcomed the kingdom's adoption of the second follow-up report on combating money laundering and terrorist financing and on implementing international standards during the Middle East and North African Financial Action Task Force meeting. The cabinet noted that these steps reflect the kingdom's efforts and the role played by the Committee for Combating Extremism, Terrorism, Money Laundering and its Financing. The cabinet further welcomed the World Health Organization's adoption of Manama Healthy City 2021 international recognition of government plans, programs and efforts in the area of health and social development, stressing ongoing efforts and programs to expand the number of health promoting locations in the kingdom. The cabinet extended congratulations to the leadership, government and citizens of the UAE on its election as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council for the period 2022 to 2023, acknowledgement by the international community of its contribution to strengthening global security and stability. Firstly, the approval of the following memorandums. In line with the Royal Directives to launch a financial and economic stimulus package designed to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 and preserve the Kingdom's sustainable development, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister is to oversee the implementation of the Royal Directives across the relevant authorities in developing appropriate solutions to support the mostly impacted sectors. A number of support initiatives within the existing financial and economic package will be extended for an additional three months from June 2021 to August 2021 set out as follows. The salaries of insured Bahraini private sector employees working in impacted sectors will be paid through the Unemployment Insurance Fund for a period of three months, 100% for the first month and 50% for the second and third months. Exempting companies impacted by COVID-19 from paying municipal fees for a period of three months. Exempting tourist establishments and facilities for paying tourist fees for a period of three months. Extension of the Tamkeen Labor Fund Business Continuity Support Program for companies impacted by COVID-19 for a period of three months. Exempting tenants of government pro properties, including government-owned companies, from the payment of rent for a period of three months. Exempting companies impacted by COVID-19 from paying the commercial registration renewal fees for the year 2021. Reopening the applications to the liquidity fund with a focus on small and medium-sized companies. This is in addition to the already announced extension of the option to defer loan repayments for a period of six months. These measures are to be introduced following the review of a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects on the Unified Guide for the Management of Hazardous Chemicals in Bahrain, which was approved according to the Unified System in GCC countries, and aims to ensure proper handling of hazardous chemicals with reactive properties and standardize their procedures for the transfer between ministries and government regulatory agencies. A memorandum by the Minister of Interior regarding cooperation between the Financial Intelligence Department in Bahrain and the Afghan unit on the exchange of financial information related to money laundering, associated criminal conduct and the financing of terrorism to collect, prepare, analyze and exchange information. A memorandum by the Minister of Foreign Affairs regarding the request for approval of an MOU between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of Seychelles on the mutual recognition of COVID-19 certificates of vaccination and recovery to facilitate the movement of citizens and residents between the two countries whilst ensuring the health and safety of all. 
A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding the signing of the GCC agreement on the cross-border payment system link the GCC countries, in line with the decisions of the Supreme Council at its 41st session to ensure the rapid, unified and safe transfer of financial payments and to enhance bilateral trade between the countries of the Council. A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding the Kingdom's participation in an International Monetary Fund initiative to provide debt relief to Sudan under the Enhanced Heavily Indebted Poor Countries initiative, which aims to support Sudan's efforts to reduce its poverty, support sustainable growth and address development challenges. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to 10 proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following topic. A memorandum by the Minister of Foreign Affairs regarding the implementation of the Cabinet's decision to establish a central register of treaties, agreements and MOUs enforced between Bahrain and other countries, as well as regional and international organizations. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Bahraini equestrian sport is one of the prominent factors in promoting the kingdom and international events through continuing to make achievements that reflect the support and follow up of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, noting that this support is the solid basis for making achievements for the kingdom. His Highness expressed pleasure with His Highness's horse line of departure, winning first place in the British Stallion Stud. EBF stake race at Salisbury Race Course in London for a distance of 1,200 meters on grass. His Highness stated that Bahrain's prominent presence in major races affirms the successful march of the Bahraini equestrian sport and international events, adding that the race is the first appearance of the full line of departure in the current season and its victory will be a motive for more successes in races. His Highness hailed the outstanding efforts made by jockey David Egan and coach Roger Werner, wishing the Bahraini participants continuous success. A three times winner as a two year old and now a winner at three in the cathedral stakes. Cardem second, tight third, maybe Kim. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for Ziyah Zainal expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his royal directives to extend a number of initiatives launched within the economic stimulus package, which affirms His Majesty's keenness and care for the people of Bahrain. She praised the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and praised the Cabinet's decision regarding the extension of three more months. The speaker highlighted the importance of enhancing cooperation between the council and the government and praised the government's efforts in ensuring the health and safety of all. She expressed thanks and appreciation to the frontliners and affirmed that Bahrain is able to overcome these challenges. She paid tribute to His Majesty the King who sent a reassuring message to the nation, affirming that Bahrain is recovering from the coronavirus. She also lauded the royal praise of efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to curb the pandemic. She praised the Royal Trust in the mandatory precautionary measures and the steps being undertaken as part of the national drive led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to combat the virus. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his royal directives to extend a number of initiatives launched within the economic stimulus package, which affirms His Majesty's keenness and care for the people of Bahrain. He praised the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and praised the Cabinet's decision regarding the extension of three more months. He affirmed that these initiatives and the economic stimulus package of 4.5 billion Bahraini dinars ensures, ensured the security of the commercial sector and contributed in overcoming many more challenges. Saleh affirmed that Bahrain is overcoming this pandemic and praised the awareness and commitment of the people in curbing the spread of the virus in addition to applying for vaccination. Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh paid tribute to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa who sent a reassuring message to the nation affirming that Bahrain is recovering from the coronavirus. As Saleh lauded the royal praise of the efforts of Team Bahrain led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to curb the pandemic. He praised the royal trust in the mandatory precautionary measures and the steps being undertaken as part of the national drive led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to combat the virus. 
He made the statement following His Royal Highness's meeting with senior officials and members of the National Medical Task Force for combating COVID-19. He praised the pivotal role led by His Royal Highness to protect citizens and residents' health and safety, provide vaccines free of charge, and find solutions in support of hardest-hit sectors. He noted the tangible drop in the number of infections and deaths over the past days, as well as the increasing number of recoveries thanks to the mandatory precautionary measures. He also praised the sacrifices and efforts of medical frontliners and other supporting authorities urging full compliance with the measures set by the National Medical Task Force. Nasser Vocational Training Center and UAE National Program for Artificial Intelligence signed an agreement to enhance partnership and cooperate to develop AI skills in the digital economy and improve virtual education and training systems by exchanging exp experiences. The agreement was signed virtually by UAE Minister of State for Artificial Intelligence, Digital Economy and Remote Work Applications, Omar Sultan Alama, and NVTC General Director Dr. Abdullah Nasser Naimi. A delegation from NVTC headed by Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and NVTC Board of Trustees Vice Chairman Dr. Mustafa Sayed visited UAE Artificial Intelligence Office where they were briefed on the National Program for AI Initiatives and the projects implemented to achieve UAE strategy goals for AI. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that more than 1,026,000 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 865,000 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 12,931 with 1,901 recoveries, 879 registered new cases and 15 deaths. 395 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 473 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.